we're going to talk about the data latch now. This is our useful latch here. We still have to build it up a bit, but we'll start then with this common D latch. Right? We see, say, D latch versus data latch. It's used to capture or latch the logic level which is present on the data line when the input enable is high. So here's a block symbol for the latch. Our input will be called D. The latch's output is Q. There's not typically a Q naught output from the latch because once we have Q, we could always um, grab that signal and invert it. And then we have the enable on the latch. So two inputs to the latch, D and the enable. And the way we define this data latch behavior is whenever the enable is zero, we don't care what the data input is because there's going to be no change on the output of Q. When the circuit's disabled, I'm sorry, when the circuit's disabled, that's a zero. When it's enabled, when enable is a one, then when D is a zero, Q will be a zero. And we typically refer to that as the reset state whenever the output of Q is a zero. Whenever the output of Q is a one, we typically refer to that as the set state. Whenever the enable is a one, D is a one, the output Q will be a one. And that's the easy thing to remember about the data latch is the output Q will always be equal to whatever's on D as long as the circuit is enabled. And so if we were going to go ahead and create this circuit, all right, out of NAND gates, here's an example down here, down below. This looks like, remember the gated, sorry, the SR latch with the enable? We had these two NAND gates here. We had these two NAND gates here, and we called this signal here S, this one down below R, and we put the enable in between. Well, the D latch is that same circuit, but with the addition of this NOT gate here. Right. So if you work through this circuit, draw this out, and go ahead and put some inputs and outputs on this circuit, you'll see here that when D is a one flowing into the NAND gate, when an able is a one, so you've got one and with one here, producing a one, but inverted, that gives you a zero here. They like said when D is a one, then your inverted D, your inverted one becomes a zero here. Enables a one, we know zero and with anything gives us a zero, but inverting gives us a one here. So we've got a zero here, a one here. Right. When you have the zero coming in here, well, you know anything and it with a zero gives you a zero. The NAND gate, the NAND gate then inverts it, so you get a one on the output. That one flows through over to here. We had a one on the output here. So one and with one produces a one, but inverting that gives a zero. So in this case, you have a zero coming back up in here. We already had the zero there, but we knew that zero and it was zero gave us a one, but inverted gave us the one and you end up with a stable state here then where your output is one and Q naught is a zero. So like I said, write out the circuit, go ahead and write down some of these inputs, trace this through to see what you get. But remember with the D latch, the D latch is really easy. Whenever the circuit's enabled, whatever's sitting on the input D flows through to the output Q. If we then write this in terms of a state table. So this was more of a functional or behavioral table, right? We're specifying the behavior of the circuit. But now if we want to put this in the form of a state table, we then list all of our present state inputs. So enable at time t, remember time t is the present state, d at time t, q at time t. Our output of the state table then is the next state, q at time t plus delta t. So that's the next state. We said then here, whenever enables a zero, and if you look, we have three inputs to this. So there are eight different unique combinations. So we have all eight of those binary combinations sitting here on the input. But when whenever enables a zero, we said there's no change. There's no change in the output Q. So if Q is a zero, Q next will be a zero. When enables a zero, if Q in the present is a one, Q in the next state will be a one. Enables a zero, Q in the present state is a zero, Q in the next state is a zero, no change. Whenever enables a zero, Q in the present state's a one, Q in the next state is a one. So this is what this is saying here. Whenever enables a zero, that's a no change, Q in the next state is equal to whatever Q in the present state is. Doesn't matter what's sitting there on D. But now 
The other behavior we defined is whenever the circuit's enabled, right? So whenever the enable signal is a level of one, then, and we call, right? We call these levels, level of zero, level of one, so a binary one. Well, then we said that Q in the next state has to be equal to whatever is sitting there on D. So circuit's enabled here, D is a zero, Q in the next state is a zero. Circuit's enabled, D here is a zero, Q in the next state is a zero. It doesn't matter what Q in the present state is. Circuit enabled, D in the present state is a one, Q in the next state is a one. Circuit enabled, D in the present state's a one, Q in the next state's a one. And we're going to see that that's basically our characteristic equation is whenever the circuit's enabled, Q in the next state is equal to whatever D is in the present state. So to summarize it, when an ever enables a zero, there's no change, the value of Q holds. When the circuit's enabled, whatever is sitting there, the value of D is passed through to the output Q in the next state. I, we then take that and we can derive the characteristic equation. So here are three inputs. We treat then Q at the, the next state as the output. We form then a truth table. Then we map these outputs then to these inputs on the truth table and we generate the next state equation. Here I solve for the one. So we said that Q in the next state is equal to the inverse of enable and with Q in the present or with enable and with D. Right. Like I said, we start dropping these T plus delta T's and we write things as Q plus. Q in the next state is equal to enable not and with Q. Well, here's enable not, right? When enable is a zero, Q is a one. So that's where that term came from. And that's ORed with, well, here enable is a one and D is a one. So enable and it with D. And that matches what we said in words because we said when enable is a zero, whatever the present state is sitting on Q becomes the next state. Or when it enables a one, whatever's sitting there on D flows through to the next state. And so that's how we develop then the characteristic equation of the gated D latch. And the gated D latch is sometimes referred to as a transparent latch as well, uh, simply because they say it's transparent, whatever's sitting there on D flows through to Q. So sometimes you'll just hear this referred to as the transparent latch. Uh, D latch with the enable is also called a gated latch. So we usually call it a gated D latch. Right? What you'll always wanna know is what are your inputs right? to derive, know its behavior when you can derive the characteristic equation if you need to, or remember the characteristic equation. That's what you want to do, is you want to remember the characteristic equation, but you'll need to be able to derive it as well for homework. All right, so this is suited for use only as temporary storage, right, between a unit and its environment. And basically, uh, we use things like a gated D latch to capture temporary information. So if you're typing at your keyboard and you want to store the key that was typed, it's often stored in a D latch, and then it's, that information then at some point is pulled out of that D latch memory and sent into another circuit. Right. So typically that's used in input output ports. So your keyboard is an input or an asynchronous system. Well, a keyboard's asynchronous because nobody ever knows exactly when you're gonna hit one key. You don't hit it in some sort of synchronized fashion. Here's a timing diagram for the D latch. So let's take a look then. Right, we have this signal here that we've been calling enable, but you're going to see it called clock, you're going to see it called gate, you're going to see it called enable. Clock and enable are two of the better terms to use with this. Right. And so here's our functional behavior, right? Whenever this clock or this enables a zero, we said we don't care what's sitting here on, on D the output is going to be whatever Q in the present state is. When the circuit is enabled or your clock level is a one, whatever's sitting there on D is going to flow through the output. So let's take a look here. Here's our clock level. So our clock level is a zero here. We said when the clock level is a zero, the output Q then will, in the next state, will always be what it is in the present state. Well, if we start here at time zero, 
and we say then at time zero, Q happened to be a zero, right? as long as this level stays zero, so from this period to this period, so if you think of each one of these squares as some sort of time period, here while this is zero, Q will remain zero. But now when this clock level becomes a one, right, this clock is your enable. So the enable or the clock is a one, right? In that case, whatever's sitting there on D flows through to Q. And D in this case at this time happens to be a one, so Q becomes a one. As long as then this clock level stays a one, here at this time when D transitions to a zero, the output Q transitions to a zero. So now Q is a zero. Our clock goes back to a level of zero. It doesn't matter whatever's sitting on D. So he, see here where D is a one and the clock level is a zero, Q maintains its state of zero. It does not change. Right. So Q in the next is equal to Q in the present. The output on Q will only change whenever the clock level is a one. So here during this time, the clock level is a one, D happens to be a one, Q will be a one. When the clock level drops to zero, Q remains a one because it was a one in the previous state, not because D is a one. And you can see here when this clock level is a zero, then Q remains a one despite the fact that D is a zero because Q was already a one in the previous state. Finally, now when this clock level goes back to a one and D happens to be a zero, then the output Q becomes a zero. So there's a timing diagram of this D latch. So we call this a clock pulse enable D latch. It's the, then the state of the latch is switched by a change in the control input. Right, the momentary change in the control input is called a trigger, and the transition that causes it is said to trigger a, the flip-flop. Well, we'll talk about flip-flops in a moment. The flip-flop is derived from the idea of the D-latch. So the D-latch with clock pulses in its control input is essentially a flip-flop that is triggered every time the pulse goes to a logic one level. As long as the pulse input remains at this level, any changes in the data input will change the output and the state of the latch. So if we go back to our timing diagram, what this is saying is whenever this clock level is a one, any changes in the input will be reflected through as changes on the output. Whenever the clock level is a zero, that's what we said before, whenever enables a zero, whatever Q happens to be remains in that state. So latches with common clocks are not desirable. In this example, if we then put two latches together and we have the enable, so this clock signal is tied to the enable, so we said whenever the clock is low, right, the output Q will not change, but whenever the clock level goes high, so a clock level of one, whatever's sitting on the input D will flow through to the output. So here, whatever's sitting on D is going to flow through to the output Q. And as long as this remains high, right, if this Q changes, then what comes out of this Q here will change. But if you don't have precise control over the timing of when you read these outputs, over the timing of this clock, then putting multiples of these latches together, chaining them together, um, becomes very difficult to control with your timing. So this is not something that we typically do. Usually a latch is used all by it by itself, it's not chained together. We'll see that with flip-flops, we can chain them together because we have a precise control of when the output of the latch changes. Sorry, the output of the flip-flop. All right, so in our next lecture, we will talk about flip-flops. So gated D latch, Q in the next state is equal to D in the present state whenever it's enabled. So whenever that enable level is a one, Q in the next equals D. When it's disabled, when it, the clock level is a zero, Q in the next is equal to Q in the present. All right, next lecture we talk about flip-flops.